Well, hey there, idiots. Welcome back to Observe. In today's video, I'm going to be analyzing the nonverbal communication of Daniel Prada in regards to the Gabby and Escape the Night drama that has been stirred up. This is the third and final part to the series, and so I hope you're ready to kind of wrap this narrative up all the way around. Let's go ahead and roll the intro. So like I said, this is part three of this three-part series, and now we have covered Gabby, we've covered Joey, and we'll be covering Daniel's side of things as well, who is a co-producer with Joey, so that we can kind of get as big of a picture as we can of this entire situation. Now, it was very cool because in Joey's video, Joey actually commented, and I'll read it here, it says, love watching your videos, so it's very weird to see myself be the one analyzed. Joey, I think you did fantastic. You seemed quite synchronized throughout, so there wasn't too much to be able to really point fingers at. So that's pretty exciting. And then after that, Daniel actually commented on that video as well and said, this is absolutely fascinating. I've been watching your videos recently, especially during the Free Britney movement exploding into the public. Your content is so interesting. Was pretty shocked when I saw that you addressed this. Daniel, buckle up, it's your turn as well. And <laughs> to really round this out, Gabby did not comment on my video saying anything. All that she did was claim it, so take that or leave it as you will. So in this video, we are gonna be analyzing Daniel's statement in regards to Gabby. I suggest you go and watch his full video. This is going to be cut down dramatically. It's a full hour video that he has where he shows texts and video footage and more evidence to be able to back up that side of the story. In my video, I've cut it down to where we have some more nonverbal points to be able to look at to see whether or not the authenticity of his body movements are going to back up his words or if they're gonna push us in another direction. So we'll have to play that by ear as well. I think that's enough of an introduction to all of this. If you haven't seen the other videos, go ahead and watch those as well. I might link them in the description below or they might even just be suggested. Regardless, let's go ahead and dive into the actual analysis. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, yeah, here we are. I did not think... Okay, a few things that I'm gonna start off with right off the bat. He seems to just be sitting in a living area. There's nothing too fancy or flashy about the set that he's working with. It doesn't seem as if we're trying to be manipulated any sort of emotional way with that. Some people will wear all white or stand in front of an all white deal just to try to give off this purity aspect of things. He doesn't seem to be doing any of that emotional manipulation right off the bat. Along with that, he seems to be sitting a little bit smaller in the frame. That kind of indicates that this might not be the style of video that he's really comfortable making. So he's probably a little just a little uncomfortable making this style of video, which I believe he actually states so in the video itself. But let's go ahead and continue on. I would be making a video like this. I've never made a video like this before. I'm not gonna consider this an exposing video. This video is about the truth. If some of you guys don't know, Gabby Hanna released a video yesterday basically talking about her little bit of a lopsided smile coming there could be related to possibly contempt where he's saying where some of you guys don't know just a little bit more action on one side of the face this could be in relation to the fact that he's saying in case you don't know this is the situation aka i have a little bit of moral or intellectual superiority in that i know some information that you don't Ergo the smile. We're just getting an idea of how his nonverbal communication behaves. I have been able to watch some of his videos to be able to understand how his body behaves in normal situations to kind of nail down a, a loose baseline. So we'll be able to work with that as we continue on through. Her experience on Escape the Night and it is just full of lies, manipulation, and delusion, and I'm here to set the record straight. Her behavior was extremely erratic, it was very rude. So one thing that Daniel has regularly in his nonverbal repertoire is that his head moves around a fair bit. Now this doesn't mean that it's gonna be more telling or less telling, it's just something we're making note of, that his head moves during his baseline, so we'll have to really try to see if there's more freezing movements or maybe dramatic spikes from there. They would have to be pretty overt spikes from an already active baseline, but it's something that we're making note of. It was disgusting, it is not professional, and nearly everybody on set had an issue with her. 
However, during that time, he has a little bit of a mouth shrug where he's saying nearly everybody has a little bit of a mouth shrug where this action here, this muscle here pushes upwards and makes a small frownish sort of expression. And then a little bit of action here around the corners of his nose, which also indicate disgust. The mouth shrug could be, uh, I don't know. It's not an insincerity gesture or expression. It's more of an insecurity, AKA the I don't know, mixed with disgust. That aligns with what his words are saying as well. So far, he's just been synchronized. However, I have a big issue with her using ADHD as an excuse for that. Having ADHD or any mental health issues, first of all, does not allow you to act like that. While everybody is different and I respect that, I personally have ADHD, I have anxiety, I have depression, but I'm an adult and I have for the past 10 years I have taken care of that and I do not let my issues with mental health reflect who I am as a person. So this isn't a nonverbal point that I'm bringing up, but he is bringing up some good points in that even though many of us do have certain difficulties or complications in interacting with people, be it anxiety, ADHD, the list can go on, that doesn't excuse us from being a bad person to people. I don't believe that you should ever use any sort of mental condition or even mental state as an excuse to be bad to people. It can be the reason that you were bad to people, but you shouldn't use it as like, a, oh, well, you can't blame me because I have this. So an excuse would be like, oh, well, say, Say you're hungry or you're tired. People can get grumpy when they're hungry and tired. That is true, and that could be the reason that a person is grumpy to you, but that's not an excuse to be grumpy or rude to another person. It's simply the reason. Gabby is trying to use it as an excuse instead of offering a reason and still apologizing or owning up to her own behaviors. And he's calling that out here. It's just an important thing to be able to bring note of and to make light of, especially for many of us who also have to be in situations where it might be difficult for us to mentally cope with the situation. Doesn't excuse you from being bad to people. Try to make sure you take care of yourself and make sure you're in positions that won't allow you to get to this this <laughs> this level, if that makes sense. Let's continue watching Daniel's video, though. When I come on set, I'm there to work, I'm there to treat other people with respect, and I'm there to have a great attitude and collaborate with people. Period. And that is something that I had a major issue with in Gabby's video. Her using that as an excuse is not an excuse. The initial concept for season four was a brain- I want to make some notes here. You'll see a lot of cuts around this area, and there weren't as many cuts in Daniel's actual video. I am just trying to make sure that everything's compiled down to where this is more consumable, because my videos, they run for about every 30 seconds of actual screen time on here. It's another two minutes or so, so it would be like a four-hour video. So for the sake of being able to make this consumable for you and still hear the message and understand everything that's being said, I've cut it down a fair bit. So you're noticing those cuts, and if you haven't, you will now, but those are also largely from me. Just be aware of that. If you wanna see the original footage, I do suggest just going and watching his video. Let's continue. New season, but we ended up going with an all-stars theme, which the network YouTube liked more. So we went out to Gabby. Gabby in her video says that we begged her to be on the show, that Joey and I were begging her. Nobody was begging you, girl. At this point, your reputation was preceding you, but there was a lull in her dramas online at the time and she was in a pretty good light, so the network approved her. Nobody was begging her to be on the show. I do have a little notebook of notes. So, so during that point, every time that he was saying a negative, like nobody was doing a thing, it's a no shake and his head is synchronized, that's good. Along with that, we could see areas where perhaps a little bit of disgust might seep out in regards to the statement of Gabby more or less portraying that they were on their hands and knees just begging her to show up on the show. And I could understand that from their sides, especially if it's not true, which so far it seems to not be true and Daniel does show some text conversations, which to be fair, text conversations are very easy to fake. It's, it's just an extremely simple move to be able to just Photoshop a person's name on a conversation. You understand. But the way that his are presented, it does seem more likely to be authentic texts because of how they're spaced and how the phrasing goes and the different dialect styles and things like that. So I do believe that the receipts, as people refer to them as, the text conversations that he's showing up on the screen, I do believe that they're genuine just based off of some of the more nuanced tells. But let's go ahead and continue forward. So I'll be glancing down occasionally. So here are some clips of the trailer and the first day. Here it is, there's a kitchen, living room, little vanity area there in the back. And over here is a bedroom. There's a shower if you wanna take a shower. Bedroom here and a toilet. 
There's a bunch of candy here in case you have a sweet tooth. There's some fruit and vegetables, some little energy supplements, uh, seaweed snacks. These are like more healthy snacks here. And then in the fridge, I'll give you the tea on what people asked for. So we have water, Red Bull, energy drinks, kombucha. Uh, Colleen literally only wanted Coke. We have fruit plates, veggie plate. Daystorm wanted protein drinks. As you can see, sweetie, that trailer. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause it here. I have no way of seeing the metadata from this footage. It. It could be possible that Daniel went and shot a different thing from a different trailer and set this all up to try to prove his side. It's not likely. It's extremely extravagant to try to just prove that there were healthy snacks. But since I can't see the metadata of the actual footage that we're talking about here, I don't know that this was shot before everything, but it does seem to be that way. And if that is true, if we're functioning off of that being true, then yes, the trailer is fully stocked. Any of us could look at that and be like, wow, that that's... That's really nice. And from somebody who has been on a set here and there once in a while in their life, that is a very nice trailer. They're not often that fancy. There's a little bit, <laughs> they're, they're usually just a little bit stripped down, if that makes more sense because costs and so on and so forth. But this makes sense. Like he's showing that there are plenty of options to eat, which kind of directly counteracts Gabby's thing of saying that there was just nothing and she was just fed this garbage and that's all she had access to, so on and so forth. So he's showing physical evidence and Gabby wasn't. Let's continue. It is stunning. Anything you wanted, we had it there. We even had hummus, vegetable trays, and all of those were being replenished daily by me. At the end of day one, a female YouTuber came up. So. This is interesting. As a co-director or co-producer, I'm not exactly certain what Daniel's role was, but it was upper ranks in this set scene. And if that's the case, then for him to be like, yeah, I'll go and get all this stuff, I'll pay for this stuff, I'll do this stuff, it's really, really rare. Very, very rare often. There are assistants, there are other people, team members that go and take care of these things, and oftentimes it's prepped away before. So for him to even be willing to run and grab stuff, it's that's pretty rare. And if you ever end up on a set, those of you watching, and this sort of thing happens, you should probably appreciate it pretty highly because it's not common. So let's just continue though. This isn't nonverbal. I'm just making a comment on this situation. Let's go. Up to Joey and I, I do want to protect people and you know, I'm not gonna bring in their names because they're not a part of this and I don't want them to get attacked by anybody. Anyways, this female YouTuber who's been a long time friend and a long time collaborator and somebody who's been online for a very long time, was very successful, she came up to Joey and I. So we can see that Daniel has settled in a little bit more non-verbally, he's gesturing a little bit more broadly, he's getting a little bit more comfortable and that happens as a video continues on. Beginning of a video, regardless of who it is, it's always gonna be more stilted than midway and into the video. That's just how that works. So he's settling in a little bit. I'm able to see his blink rate at its normal speed, which he does have a little bit more active of a blink rate in this video, but he's processing a lot during that. And anytime that you see somebody who has an increase in blinking rate, that can indicate that they are psychologically processing something. It doesn't mean that they're lying. It doesn't mean that they're hiding something. It does mean that they're processing something, be it an emotion, thoughts, Etc. So we're seeing that come in here and it is pretty regular so we can kind of count that towards his baseline. Let's continue. And asked to be killed off the show as soon as possible because she was extremely uncomfortable with Gabby Hanna and how she was acting on set. So I'm thinking, I'm like, huh, interesting. Her actions are now affecting the cast. Interesting. So during this time, Daniel's using an expression of genuine recollection which is that narrowing of the eyes, looking off to the side as you recall memories, be them auditory, visual, what have you. But I will say this, it doesn't really matter which direction they're looking. That's been pretty much disproven that there's not a directional IQ sort of thing. If they're looking off to the side, then they're recalling fake or fake or whatever, what have you. It's pretty largely disproven. But this expression of looking off into the side and squinting the eyes lightly, that is actually pretty common. So that is something that I will make note of, but then he is also saying a verbal pattern here to where it buys a little bit of time and it adds a little bit of narrative. So I don't know if this is some of his screenwriting coming in to where it has a little bit more flair, or maybe that's just how he talks, but it is something that he's added in there just to help guide us along with things and pack his side of the narrative, not inaccurately, but just add more weight to it that he's done verbally as well. Just some interesting things that we're making note of. Let's continue. 
If her actions affect me, I understand that. I'm able to move past that because I'm a professional and I want to keep people happy, I want to keep it rolling. But now that it's affecting cast, and I heard some things from crew, from the makeup and wardrobe department, we have an issue here. In Gabby's video, she continues to lie about her wardrobe, saying nothing fit. She was getting irritated because of her jewelry. Let me give you the facts here. Real quick, I do remember this part of Gabby's video and she does have a picture of what looks to be a rash or at least inflammation from some jewelry. And then the necklace that she had, she said that it, she needed a certain type of metal and then if she didn't, then she was pretty allergic to that. So there was this whole fiasco that went along with this and Gabby did have a picture of that. So he's about to address that. So let's see what happens. The reason why her outfit didn't fit is because Gabby didn't attend two out of the three wardrobe fittings. Right here, I'm gonna show a text. Again, I'm completely leaving the executive's name out of the text because I don't want her to be attacked, but here's the text. This is March 8th. This is three days before filming. So I'm pausing it here while it's still up there. If you wanna read that, you can, but to not show up for two of three fittings, I didn't see any desynchronization from Daniel during that part. There weren't any anomalies that would be like, well, maybe he might not be telling the truth. Maybe she did show up or she didn't. Nothing showed up that alerted me. Now, does that mean that he's not lying here? Not necessarily, but it really does push me towards authenticity on this point. But then for Gabby to not show up for two of the fittings, then that's her problem that it didn't fit correctly. You have to show up to the fittings because they're there to make sure that they fit, ergo the name fitting. So I don't, I don't know why Gabby was surprised that her outfit didn't fit correctly if she didn't go to the fittings to make sure it did so. That's neither here nor there non-verbally though. Let's continue. Everybody's stressed. Everybody's freaking. It is crunch time. The way wardrobe works, it is done weeks before the show is supposed to start, not days. Maybe in the last few days, there's a few edits. We change a color. We change a little size. We do a little nip, a little tuck, but that's it. Everybody else somehow in their busy schedules, including Bretman Rock, who flew from Hawaii, he was able to make all his wardrobe appointments. Every single person was except for Gabby. I don't know. To me... <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing some frustration coming out in Daniel's baseline now. We're seeing some disgust continue to show up around his nose just very slightly. We see a pretty substantial lip compression here, but that's a conscious one. We know what it's conveying. And then he has a shrug in there that's showing the I don't know idea behind that. And it's also accompanied by some more active movements in his shoulders and arms as well. It's just showing that he has agitation centered around this topic. His frustration with Gabby is starting to leak out here, which, I mean, I think we could all understand a little bit. Let's continue. I don't really need to expand upon that. The facts are here. So the issues surrounding the wardrobe are valid, I will say that, but the reason why they're valid is because Gabby, you never showed up to the costume fittings. Okay, let's talk about the food restrictions on set. In Gabby's video, she's saying that the food issues on set triggered her eating disorders, which, you know, I will be sensitive to that. And if that's the case, so he's using an expression that conveys confusion or highlights absurdity in, a, in an area. This, like I said, this has popped up multiple times across most people, this absurd expression, they're like, <laughs> kind of thing. It's absurd. That's what he's trying to highlight. And then after that, he does say, I will be sensitive to that. But we do know that from the emotional state that he just previewed for us, that he feels that it's absurd. Something about what she was demanding was absurd, or at least he felt it was absurd on some level. Now, does that mean that he won't be sensitive to it? Absolutely not. He could still be very sensitive to any sort of eating or dietary restrictions, but that doesn't mean that one wouldn't think that they're absurd here and there. So that's just what we're seeing so far. I don't believe that he was meaning that negatively or hostily, especially for anybody else who does have some very severe eating disorders or even just dietary restrictions on any level. I don't think he was trying to be hateful towards that. I wanna make that clear. I'm not sharing this video to try to spread hate to anybody. I'm just trying to add some clarity from the emotional standpoint, from the non-verbal standpoint to hopefully add a little bit of weight behind a person's opinion of things. Let's continue. I completely respect it and I'm sorry that that happened. However, I will not be lied on saying that there were not options for you. First things first, weeks before production starts, everybody has sent a shit ton of paperwork. Paperwork talking about your preferences, allergies, what you wanna eat on set. None of that was filled out, period. Pretty substantial illustrators and manipulators as he's counting on his fingers like that. 
that's not lending towards authenticity or deceit or anything like that. It is just something that we're making note of. We are seeing him open up more and more non-verbally as he's becoming more comfortable and also settling into the emotional state of what he's talking about. For those of you who don't talk to a camera often, it can be hard to settle into the emotional state that you're talking about, regardless of how authentic you are. So we're seeing that come out. And what's good to see is that he's settling into it synchronized. If he was trying to settle into it and it was still desynchronized, well, then we have a lot of red flags of being like, okay, why, why is he trying to settle into this emotional state, but it's coming across as disjointed? Why is that happening? Where is he hiding information from us? We're not seeing that from Daniel. That's good news. This is either because he's very trained in acting and performing on screen or because he's being authentic. Let's see if that really clarifies throughout the rest of the video. Period. And if you don't fill out the paperwork, how are we supposed to know what you want to eat? The only email I ever got from her team was that she can't have mangoes, no dairy, and no sugar. There are options there. There were options in Crafty. If you wanted to get something else, you could Postmate it to yourself. But I'm assuming that she just did not want to spend any of her own money. But guess what? This is how production works. We get that is an interesting aspect. I don't know, maybe Gabby really just didn't want to spend a single dime of her own money during this time, which is strange, but I mean, I, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out a way that I could relate to Gabby's side on this. I'm, I'm not having any difficulty relating to Daniel on this and understanding the functionings of a set. So I'm trying to figure it out, but I don't know. I'm having difficulty figuring out why if she's having such difficulty with eating and the dietary issues and if she said that she's tried again and again and again to get these dietary things taken care of and they weren't according to her then why why didn't she just order some in it's interesting it does seem as though it kind of reveals a little bit of gabby's psychological state during this as if everything needs to be handed to her which is not not the right sort of attitude to have when you walk onto a set it really doesn't go well as i think we're all seeing but i'm not sure let's see Gave you the options, everything was there, the platter was out, and you didn't want to eat anything. Again, I went above and beyond. I worked my fucking ass off on this set. I'm doing jobs I didn't mind doing, but were not in my job description. And I didn't mind doing it because these people were my friends and I did not want to create a toxic atmosphere due to her behavior. So anything that she's saying, the agitation is increasing in this area. He feels passionately about what he's talking, and that's more showing itself in the breaths that he's taking when a person is getting more passionate about something, be it angry or just really passionate about it, the breaths will shorten. It'll be like a sort of short breath in kind of thing, these sharper breaths as it shows that they're really feeling the emotion that they're having. His face isn't really emoting too far beyond a normal kind of baseline state, but the psychophysiological aspects, the short, sharp breaths, that is revealing to us that he is feeling the emotion that he's talking about, once again, synchronized. Let's continue. This is false. This is a narrative that she's creating to make me look bad and I refuse to stand by that. Not one other person had an issue with any of the food on set. So there were moments where she was told- I would actually believe him on that part. There wasn't anything that popped up to be like, ah, actually you did a thing that could be seen as maybe some disconnect. There, there just wasn't anything. So I would believe that everybody else seemed to be pretty okay. And that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, free catered food is pretty nice, so I, it would be more logical to assume that people were okay with what was there or they ordered their own in. But maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just my preference. Obviously, this isn't nonverbal. To hurry up and wait for interviews, and there were moments that she didn't want to do the interviews. And you know what? That's part of production. I totally understand that. All in all, the reason why this double kill happened that would be an area where <laughs> where I wouldn't actually necessarily believe that he totally understands that. He does have some difficulty holding eye contact in that area. He could be referring to notes as he's about to move on to the next step, but it is odd that when he's saying, I totally understand that, he has a pretty substantial head shake, which the larger the, the head movement, the more likely it is to be consciously controlled. This one doesn't seem to be consciously controlled. So maybe the way that we could see this is that he might not totally understand that he can understand that but there are parts of him that thinks that it is either silly or maybe a little absurd or self-centered something that really does kind of counteract that phrasing of totally understand that shows up in his body language it's not detracting from his message but it is something that has stuck out so let's continue happened tana had to go to an award show and gabby was 
a absolute mess on set. You know, you can mouth off to me. You can treat me however you want. <laughs> Gabby was long pause, a absolute mess on set. That's not the words that he wanted to say. I do believe that those would have been much more harsh as, as kind of connotated by the long pause in there. Anytime that a person has a long pause, they're heavily considering their next words, making sure that they flow correctly or that they're not being too controversial. I'm sure that if Daniel was able to speak maybe face to face with a friend in private, it might not be that gentle of phrasing. It might be a little bit more harsh than that, but I think the, the message behind it would pretty much stay the same, just maybe a little less polite, if that makes sense. Let's continue. I can take it, but my big issue here is not only were you disrespectful to me, you were disrespectful to the crew, and the crew are our family. We've been working on the show for four years. We work very closely with each other, and they are like family, and they work extremely hard. So when I have... I'm seeing some action come in around his eyes on this part. It's difficult to explain the action, but there is a little bit of tightening and alteration around his eyes in this part. You could also hear just a slight tightness coming into his throat, which means that he's feeling a substantial amount of emotion centered around Gabby lashing out to the crew that he's not verbally stating very clearly. He's feeling a, a, a substantial amount of emotion but not talking about it. I'm not sure why he's not talking about it, but he is saying that they are like family and they've been with him for a long time. And that could, I suppose, cause a person to choke up a little bit. He, even though he's trying to control it and keep it down for the video, it is seeping out a little bit. Some of my friends who are A-list makeup artists and A-list wardrobers, that really affects me and it really hurts my heart that somebody is making them feel uncomfortable. Okay, so here we are. He is now bringing a little bit more light to that and the fact that the emotion kind of slid in there and then his words followed it and he wasn't trying to like, oh my goodness, I'm crying these tears. Do you see these tears that I'm crying? Look at how wet my cheeks are with these tears. There wasn't any fake crying. There wasn't any fake wiping away of tears. It does seem to be him genuinely trying to muscle down emotion, which is synchronized. Still good on Daniel's part, let's continue watching. Because they're working their ass off for a rate that is not what they normally make. It is much lower on productions, and most of them were doing it as a favor. Next, I want to talk about the key art shoot. So the day before the key art shoot, Gabby had another extreme meltdown to me, personally. Again, I really wish I did not have to deal with this, but I did. It is not in my job to deal with it. I was verbally harassed, I was attacked, I was demeaned, and she made me cry. At this point, I'm running, it's a few days after the shoot, I've worked the entire month on this, and I'm not, I don't wanna get emotional about this, but I was fucking tired, I was absolutely exhausted. She sent me this voice note, which I will play. She, I cried, I was bawling my eyes out. I called Colleen, Colleen. There's a lot of negative emotions centered around him recalling his act of crying. I don't know if it's because he's, he doesn't want to admit that he was crying during this time or, or what, but he does have a lot of synchronized negative emotion seepage during this. You can still hear a little bit of action in his vocal cords. He has a lot of no shakes to be able to relate to the negative emotional state of what he's saying. And he's looking away, but you can see that he's looking down at his notes a fair bit or maybe his phone, something like that down there to be able to reference that. But it does seem pretty synchronized that he's speaking of crying and having a bad time and being frustrated and then his body language is reflecting that. Good on you, Daniel. You are still portraying synchronized nonverbal communication. I think so far it's because you're being genuine and not because you're just a fantastic actor or something like that. Let's continue. Colleen can stand by this. I did not know how to react to this because I've never felt so demeaned and so put down ever in my life, especially by somebody that I considered a that narrowing of the eyes, lowering of the eyebrows, crinkling of the nose, and the action in there that's disgust mixed with disdain or anger, hostility, anything in that group, he has a lot of negative feelings towards Gabby's way of talking to him. I don't know. I, I yeah, okay, that makes sense. Let's continue. Coworker somebody who I was friendly with, somebody who I truly did my best to appease and support and be kind to on set. Gabby then sent me a voice memo, which I will play right now, and now you guys have the facts here. 
So just so you know, we're gonna go ahead and play through pretty much this entire voice memo. I'll talk about what I saw throughout it as it goes on, but a lot of this is gonna be pretty overt nonverbal communication. You can even let me know in the comments what you see during that so that you can maybe compare afterwards as to what I see. And then I think we'll be able to wrap up the video shortly thereafter. So let's just see how this plays out. And you actually know what the T is. It's like I know I'm reading this and like actually chuckling to myself because it's honestly unreal. I have, I have gone above and beyond and I have sat there for hours in complete full glam when I knew I was not needed that early and did not get my interviews done and then had people lie to I'm sorry, there was just a little tiny flash of contempt that came in before his full expression came in. And that's the, that's the genuine indicator. He has moral or intellectual superiority in regards to that statement of her sitting in full glam and her bending over backwards, he really feels like he's morally or intellectually above that, which <laughs> I think we get why. But I know, I know I said I wouldn't pause it throughout this. That is the one pause that I will do. We'll talk about it at the end. My agent and say I was refusing to work. That is ridiculous. Now you guys rescheduled this shoot multiple times and I have rescheduled my schedule multiple times. I have a conflict. I didn't realize that this was going to be an eight to nine hour day. Colleen is saying the same thing. She's freaking out because nobody can understand why this is this long of a day. The project I'm going to pause this right here for a sec. She doesn't know that Colleen is one of my best friends and I was on the phone with her. Colleen knows exactly how this shoot works. She's had multiple shows of her own. She's toured the world. She's had a Netflix show. She knows exactly what key art shoots entail. And this was not a non-issue for her. She even brought her assistant Corey with her. He was handling things. Her whole family was there. She had her own little green room where she could breastfeed. So I'm not sure where she's thinking that lying using an amazing person like Colleen is gonna get her. I'm very confused here, but I digress. Let's continue. ...is extremely inefficient. I know that I'm gonna go sit there for hours and hours and hours and hours when realistically it should take a couple of hours. I have something that I have scheduled, a project that I've already rescheduled multiple times now. I have to work around other people's schedules for that too. If you guys can't be flexible by two hours after the bullshit that you guys put me through, I would love to send you pictures of my back and the hives on my neck, my ears, and my chest, and the extreme bloody pussy breakouts I had when nobody listened to me about being allergic to jewelry. I'd like to send you the photos of the bruises and cuts from my bleeding wrist, from the rope that you guys tied around my wrist, and I sat there for literally 35 to 40 minutes. I'm gonna pause it again. So during one of the scenes, Gabby was tied to a chair in the dining room of season four, and there was somebody across the table from her that was also tied to a chair, and that was me. Every season I have a little Easter. I am gonna pause it real quick as well, just cause he's also paused it and it's a little break in the narrative. So what we can look at during this time so far is that he has a good number of mini expressions with the lower half of his face with uh, lip licking and biting and lip compressions and all of those are indicators of agitation usually related to a negative emotion hostility of some form or distaste of some form or disdain of some form which that does make sense so those are the more unconscious moves that he's making. Along with that, he is making some more overt and conscious expressions that follow along with the narrative to show where he feels that things are absurd or ridiculous or something along those lines. And those, since they're conscious, they're not as telling as the smaller ones that aren't consciously done to communicate to us. So that's what I'm seeing so far in that. Let's continue on through with the rest of this really lovely voicemail. Egg character. I was in full prosthesis. I was a caveman, a pretty gorgeous one if I dare say sorry myself. And I was tied with that same rope. I was tied by the same person in the exact same way. This is stunt rope. It is not real rope. There were no cuts on me. Unfortunately, I did not show my wrist. I didn't take pictures. But you know what? Maybe her skin is extremely sensitive and maybe she was scratched up a bit. But there were no cuts. There was no pus. There was no bleeding of the wrists. And it was not 40 minutes long. We filmed maybe three takes and we filmed in about 20 minutes. So again, this entire area is characterized by disgust or disdain in regards to what Gabby's saying, which 
if she is lying in that, which I can't say because it's hard to say over just vocal analysis alone, but if she is lying in that, then the disdain and disgust is quite understandable from Daniel's side. Let's continue. I'm just not seeing the connection here. When the cameramen weren't even in the room to film, I had to be sitting there tied up with not even prop rope, real actual rope that bruised and cut my fucking wrist for no reason. Like, it's bullshit, Daniel. I have gone above and beyond for you guys. So for you to send me that message when I'm saying, hey, I need to come an hour or two later because I've already rescheduled this three times and I have to be there and I'm depending on other people, that to me is absolutely disrespectful. I feel so disrespected when the only things I've ever asked for was a costume to fit, which again- A costume to fit? And it didn't fit because you did not come to the wardrobe fittings, Gabby. And guess who else backs me up to verify that information? Rosanna Pansino. I'll pop it up here, she tweeted on Twitter. She did not attend two out of the three of her fittings, and then she made a grown woman who was nine months pregnant come to her music studio in Porter Ranch, which is a ways out of Los Angeles, and fit her, and then she still left early. So there's your reasoning there. This year it did not and should be warm when everybody else is running around and you had the option to be warm you were given the option for a large overcoat but you did not want to wear that because you wanted the beautiful garment to be seen fur and coat and i'm in a sheer silk garb that was being specifically made for me so that i could have warmth to wear jewelry that i'm not allergic to that i don't have the jewelry situation i'm not talking about this again if you didn't want to wear the necklace you didn't have to and pussy things going up and down my back. Also, there's a cream for that. Back in my neck and my ears, and to have healthy meals. You guys, I've given all the receipts about the meals. It's come, this is a fabrication, so I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you guys are seeing, I, I, let me know if you guys are seeing something that's not there, because I went above and beyond several times. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna also pause in this area. As the voicemail has continued forward, more and more tells of frustration and agitation are popping up in his baseline, spiking from where he normally sits, especially centered around the lip compressions, lip licks, so on and so forth. Those are, like I said, common tales of agitation. So he's getting more angry. He also has more opinions related around that as he's pausing and speaking more. And then he does this overt, absurd expression of, you let me know if there's anything, you know, like maybe there is, he's anticipating that there's not. Because he knows there's not, because there, it, there wasn't. <laughs> so that's, that's what he's doing and that's what he's showing with his nonverbal communication. We're getting pretty close to the end of this video. Let's continue. I went out. Before cameras were up at 7 p.m., I went out at 7.30 to make her salads myself. And guess what? They weren't even eaten. And it'd be nice if you guys didn't lie to my agent and say that I was refusing to work when I'm literally sitting there. Daniel, you were sitting there when they came in a hundred times and said, Gabby, get ready for your interview. Like I said, hurry up and wait. She was refusing to work, as shown in the text previously. And then I got ready for my interview, and nobody came and got me for my interview. And that's going to be relayed as I refuse to do my interviews and have my agent telling me that I'm refusing to work. So I'm sorry if everybody, like, first of all, had way less to complain about. And I'm sorry if... You're right. Everybody did have way less to complain about. Frankly, there were no other complaints because everybody's a professional and likes to fill out paperwork and notifies us of anything they may need on set. Or they take it into their own hands or have an assistant or a manager handle it. Unlike you. They all make their managers and agents do it or just talk shit about you and Joey behind your back instead of saying it to you. Again, her trying to push people against me or say that other people are talking shit. I'm a very direct and blunt person, so I will always come to you and you can always come to me and everybody knows that about me. And demanding the respect that they want instead of bitching about it behind your back. So in this part, I am gonna pause it here because he's showing some more agitation even down to the psychophysiological level where you can hear him have a little bit of shorter breaths and a little bit more shallow of breaths in there as he's taking more breaths to get more oxygen. You know, the whole the whole spiel. But along with that, I, you know what, I'll talk about Gabby's side of things and I'll talk about his side of things after the recording. Which maybe that's like, maybe that's Hollywood. Maybe you're supposed to fish behind people's backs in Hollywood. But if I'm sitting there and I'm uncomfortable and like I have very minimal, simple requests, like, hey, can I please not be standing out in 30 degree weather and just silk this year? Can I please move my arms this year? 
can I please like wear jewelry that I'm not allergic to this year? And all of those things are ignored. I'm sorry. That, that is unbelievable to me that you just spoke to me like that. So there's that. I mean, you know, I think that I don't really need to say anything anymore. I've put out all the truth. The texts are there. I have no reason to lie. I'm not gonna say I hope you guys enjoyed this, but I hope you guys see the truth. Everything's there for you to take as you may. I have nothing left to say anymore. I think that really sums it all up. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. And that's why we're here on this channel trying to hopefully parse out the truth a little bit more. Okay, so speaking during that voicemail, and thinking about the process of things and how stuff runs on sets and whatnot, I do believe that Gabby is not cut out for working on a set. She's too specific with what she wants, and if, if that's challenged in any way, she doesn't handle it well at all. And if that's the case, it's really hard to be able to function on a set. From a small production all the way up to a full Hollywood movie production, there's always times that both crew and talent is going to have to sacrifice what they want or what they're feeling to be able to make the piece happen. That's the goal on the set, is to be able to get the show finished, get the movie finished, get the content completed. And that doesn't sound to be Gabby's mindset here. It feels as if she wanted it to be more maybe about her or something along those lines, or she just didn't want to be there at all, which if that's the case, why did she go? So from what I'm hearing, Gabby should just not go on a set because she doesn't seem to want to work for the good of the content. She only seems to want to work for the good of herself. Now, in relation to his responses towards things, like I said, as things were going on, you could tell he was getting more agitated, more frustrated, and it was showing up in subtle ways and not so subtle ways. And so from my opinion side of things, I understand his side more just because I've been behind the camera more so than the screen talent side of things. So I understand the frustrations, the pressures, the schedules. If one thing gets knocked, it, it, it affects so many other things that you just, you never expect. You would never expect it to affect like, you know, costumes are now going poorly because an interview was done bad here and now somebody that was supposed to be here needs to be over here and it, it's, it's a nightmare. So trying to stick to that schedule is very important. And all of these moving pieces are difficult to wrangle regardless. And then if you add on these extra things that he seemed to be doing and seemed to be pretty genuine while recollecting and speaking about where he's running errands for people and grabbing stuff, it, it gets worse. So I can sympathize with his side more. Speaking on Gabby's side though, I understand her frustration with feeling like you might not be taken care of or feeling like you're an afterthought or something along those lines because oftentimes the talent will be at some point an afterthought because there's 55 other things and they're not really just like oh well I don't care about it it's more so I have got a mountain of things that I have to get done now or I have to take care of the one talent they're going to try to take care of the talent as best they can but they have to get these things done so I understand Gabby's frustration with maybe the hurry and sit and wait thing which it does happen it happens all the time big deal you kind of have to just expect that when you go to a set and some people have commented even on my other videos of being like so are you telling me that when going on a set everybody should just treat everybody poorly and no that's not it but when you're going on a set you have to get rid of your ego you just have to because there are going to be points where you're uncomfortable there are going to be points where you have to work long hours there are going to be points that you miss sleep there are going to be points that you miss meals or have to weigh stuff yourself for like a set meal or something like that. There's discomfort involved in creating good work. And so Gabby refuses to adapt. She refuses to go through the discomfort to be able to make a brilliant piece over here. And so that's the difficulty that I'm seeing here. As far as his nonverbal communication, Daniel, I think you were quite, quite synchronized throughout the entirety of your video. There were some areas where I feel like you may have been more polite than you would have maybe in private, and that showed up a little bit nonverbally. And it was quite clear that you were quite agitated and emotionally affected by what was going on and what was being said. And that's not pushing towards authenticity or deceit, but it is showing that you were at least synchronized with your words. And that synchronization between those can push more towards authenticity rather than deceit. Along with that, you showed a whole bunch of footage and texts and whatnot, so good on you. I feel like this brings this entire narrative to a close. 
Gabby needed to be a little bit more self-sacrificing, a little bit less egotistical and self-centered, maybe communicate, work a little bit harder to make things work better. And I think this would have gone much differently. I do believe that Gabby is in a rough psychological state. I think that she needs to take some time to be able to address herself and not, not try to pursue anything. Just stop for a second, let life happen without you in it, and just allow yourself to recollect and to rebuild and to maybe get to a better, healthier state of mind, especially if you're gonna be going into situations that could be seen as triggering for you, then try to prepare yourself for that. Because if you don't, then that's on you. It's nobody else's responsibility to make sure that you take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself. And so that's, that's kind of my opinion on this side of things. I, I think that, like I said, I think this wraps everything up. So if you disagreed with me, please let me know why in the comments below. I do try to read as many as the comments as I can. There's a lot, so I, I oftentimes lose track or I just can't keep up. But I do try to keep track of them and see because I'm still learning and growing and developing the study that I'm working on now to be able to be a better nonverbal analyst myself and hearing feedback from people, hearing personal opinions or different instances of things, it always just flashes out the study. And I really do appreciate that. So if you, if you would like to, I would appreciate it. Let me know in the comments below. If you did like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe. If you haven't already, hit the bell button. I'm gonna be doing a 500,000, <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be more subscribers than that now, but a 500,000 milestone tattoo reveal and top five questions being answered live stream here soon. So keep your eye out for that. I will make sure to like publish it so you can see that it's premiering at a certain time or whatever. So you can have a heads up and hopefully schedule in. I'd love to see you there. You'll get to talk about some of the tattoos that I have under here and hopefully we'll have a good time. But, but without further ado, that's all that I've got for the day. My name is Logan and you have been oh so awesome as you always are. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.